I don't really know how to start this video. This is the type of conversation I would have with my closest friends. I just think there's so much power in sharing my story, being open, and giving space for us to process our journeys together. Ever since starting my YouTube channel, a lot of women have approached me and shared with me how confident they think I am. And when I shared with them my insecurities, they were just really shocked, really surprised that I had insecurities or that I was struggling with the same things as them. And that's just like crazy. What they thought about me could not be further from the truth. I want to be honest with you about the things I struggle with and not only to be honest and share it, but I really do want to move forward as well. So this week I did a little bit of digging because I wanted to go back in time and read the old journal entries that I wrote, all the thoughts, insecurities, and feelings that I felt in my late teens and early 20s. I picked one entry to share today from me when I was 17 years old. This one really represents my past struggles with body image, but as I share, you'll see that even though my journey with body image looks different now, it's still an insecurity. It just manifests in different ways. Before I get started, I'm just gonna give a trigger warning. Um, in this journal entry, I talk negatively about myself. And if that's something that's not helpful for you to hear right now, I have the whole video sectioned out in different chapter titles. So feel free to just click on to the next chapter. March 1st, 2012, when I was 17 years old. Today, I really wanted to eat a piece of Japanese bread and I craved coffee cake, but I decided against eating them. I used to be so skinny and pretty, and now I'm a fat piece of crap. The more insecure I am, the more I eat. I can't help it. I have these random days when I'll be super motivated to diet and to work out. It lasts for a day or two, and then I'm back to my old ways. I don't even know what will work. Should I just significantly eat less? Go running more often? Give up eating for lunch? I don't know what to do right now. I feel so miserable. Growing up, I was naturally really skinny. I remember wearing like zero, zero jeans and they would still barely fit because they were too big. I grew up with a lot of compliments from family members telling me I was so pretty, so skinny. And looking back, it really formed the foundation for my self-worth back then. Once 17 hit and I started gaining weight, the compliments not only stopped, but then came criticism. And especially in an Asian American culture, it can be really common to be told by your family members that you're fat or that you gained weight. And I think now that I'm older, I'm realizing that their intent was never evil, never to hurt me, but I think there was just a culture difference. For them, it was really common to just point out someone's weight or physical appearance and it doesn't really mean much. It just means, you know, eat less or I don't really know. I still don't really know, but I know that it affected me in ways that my family members never intended for it to affect me. So yeah, as you can see, I was 17 years old, getting ready for prom and I just felt so insecure just so unhappy, so sad that all of the love and compliments and affirmation that I once received no longer happened. And I just didn't know what to do. Like I didn't know what I was worth anymore because for the longest time, I just thought, yeah, I'm this pretty skinny girl that everyone loves because that's all I heard. And so if I didn't hear that anymore, it's like, who was I? Or like, what worth did I have anymore? I felt really really self-conscious about my body and my weight all throughout 17 years old to about senior year of college that was just like a really hard time in my life like truly i just felt so ugly and so unattractive and it's not because i was unattractive I just felt that way and I, I look back now, like I look back on my pictures and I don't see someone who was fat or ugly or any of those things. I just see someone who was so sad, who lost her self-worth, didn't feel like, didn't feel like she had role models in her life to really tell her what beauty is. I see someone who went through puberty and had natural weight gain, but didn't have the language to understand that it's normal. And she just lived in so much fear of what others would say about her. Every time she went to family gatherings or visited Hong Kong to see family, there was just this 
constant fear that they would say something like, oh, you gained more weight, you're so cute and chubby or whatever they would say. And I see a girl who didn't even know how to relate to food anymore. Food was no longer something she enjoyed and felt nourished by, but food was like this enemy that she feared. And it's like anytime she touched food, it meant that she would get more criticism. So yeah, I went through a lot of fad diets and things like that at that age. There were times where I restricted myself to under a thousand calories a day, but I just like justified it by saying like, oh, I'm not hungry or things like that. There would be so many times where I would suppress myself, kind of like in my journal entry where like I saw different types of food and I just like didn't let myself eat it. But because I was suppressing so much, I would just end up binge eating like crazy. In our high school, there were these vending machines and there was this one snack. It was like this vanilla flavored, like almost like an Oreo cookie, but vanilla flavored. And it was like the best bang for your buck because it was $1.50, but you would get like a, oh my gosh, I'm like, I'm like snot. <laughs> It was like a dollar fifty, and you'd get this like huge bag, and it'd be like completely full, which is crazy because all the other like chip bags would be like half full, but this one was like completely filled to the brim. And I just remember at my most insecure, most suppressing, self-loathing time, I would not eat anything much at home, but then at school I would take breaks from class and just buy those dollar fifty vanilla Oreos and just eat all of them during like math class. And I would do that like almost every single day because it was the one time in my day where I was eating something I enjoyed without any critique from anybody. Those white Oreos were probably the culprit behind a lot of my unnecessary weight gain. But honestly, I look back and it's like, I can tell I was just trying to survive. One of the most healing things that I've been going through with my therapist is realizing that all these harmful and self-protective coping mechanisms that I've been doing all my life, while I feel so frustrated at them, my therapist, on the other hand, helps me to not condemn those behaviors, but really understand that they were really there for my protection. They were there to make me feel safe during a time where I didn't feel safe. What would it now look like to move from a place of self-protection to now a place of freedom where I acknowledge I am safe, there's actually nothing to fear, and I can actually choose to live differently now. Now I'm at a weight that my 17-year-old self would have killed to have. I don't want to paint this picture that once the weight came off, then I was like super happy and super confident because that's not true. Once the weight came off, I felt happy not because I was skinny or whatever, but because people didn't bother me anymore. Like, I don't even want, I don't need compliments. I just don't want any more people offering their advice to me or making unnecessary comments about my body weight. That was like the happiest thing that ever happened to me. Just people not saying anything anymore. And I'm happy not only because criticism stopped, but because I can eat a piece of Japanese bread and not worry to death about gaining like two pounds the next day. That's where the happiness came from. It came from just not having to define my self-worth based on a weight on a scale or the kind of food I was eating. I don't even own a scale anymore. I don't care to own a scale. I don't care what the number says. I know that I love food. Food is there to nourish me. Food makes me happy. Like when I'm, <laughs> this is so silly to cry about, but like seriously, like when I'm sad, when I'm gloomy, I go get my favorite boba cocoa milk tea and it makes me so happy. And I just can't believe I spent so much of my life fearing food and feeling like I was so out of control anytime I was around food. And it's like, if I just had the self-worth, if I just stopped defining myself by all those external factors and critiques, then I could have just had the, the confidence to treat food as it is. Not some determining factor of my worth, but just something that is there to support me and nourish me and make my body feel healthy. Uh, I'm losing it. I'm happy now, not because I'm lighter or I somehow look skinnier, but simply because I feel like I've taken back my power to choose what I want to eat, how much I want to eat, how much I want to work out, simply based on my own preference and how I want to invest into my own body, not based on some external factor of how society defines beauty. 
a ride. <laughs> While I am really happy about my newfound relationship with food and my body, there are still insecurities that I really do struggle with. One of them is my jawline. I just grew up hearing constantly that I would be prettier if only my face was skinnier. I would be prettier if only my jaw was not as defined. This one is a tough one because it is my bone, it isn't fat on my cheeks, it's not hair that can be adjusted, like it's bone. And so I feel like I only have two options. It's either I have to get surgery and change it, like shave off the bone, or I need to find a way to just embrace it and be happy with it. And I'll be honest with you, growing up, I never really considered plastic surgery, but as I got older, like around age 24, I, I really did kind of consider it for a brief moment. There are moments where I would watch other YouTubers talk about their jawlines and how happier they are after they shave down their jawline so they look more feminine and all these things and I found myself googling it and researching it and even like talking to my friends about it like genuinely wondering is that something I want to do like is that something that I hate so much that it's actually worth putting myself into surgery for Another thing I'm really insecure about is my waist and my hip area. Growing up, I knew I had like a pretty straight body and that was fine when I was a kid, but I thought to myself, once you become a woman, you're gonna have a small waist round butt, right? Kind of like those Chloe Ting exercises. But yeah, no, as I grew and grew, my waist stayed the same and my hips stayed the same and they've just stayed the same ever since. I feel like I've grown up in an environment and a society where a smaller waist and big hips are seen as more attractive and more sexy. In my mind, I know that a lot of these pressures I put on myself in regards to my jawline and my waist and my hips are based on how the media has represented what beauty is, but it just takes a lot of internal work and time and energy to really get my heart to believe it too. Whatever insecurities we're wrestling with in terms of outer appearance and our bodies and our face, it's really important that we seriously consider where these insecurities stem from. Are they from certain beauty standards that are constantly portrayed in the media? Is it from the constant critiques of the people around us. I know for a fact that I wasn't just born and thought it's definitely better to have a thin v-shaped jawline rather than something that protrudes outward. Like no, it's the meanings that people start attaching to these things and then their influence on you and the collective influence of society on you that causes you to start thinking, oh is this thing that was actually really normal about me actually considered ugly to other people? So do I think it's actually ugly then to myself? One of the most eye-opening moments was in high school when I was chatting with a friend and she said, you know, I'm really insecure about my legs. And I thought to myself, dang, you got good legs. Like they're like nice and athletic and they're pretty thin. And she said, I'm really insecure that I don't have a thigh gap. And I was like, what the heck is that? I literally thought she meant like, like a gap like in the middle of your thigh, like 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 a gap in one thigh. And then she explained to me, she even pulled up a Google image of like two women, one with a thigh gap where the thighs are farther apart so there's a gap in between. And then the other image is a woman with no thigh gap where the thighs are touching. I was just like, since when did the fact that your thighs don't touch is like this super attractive thing. Like I was just really confused. And I started observing it more. I realized, oh yeah, all of the models and magazines and the celebrities on TV, they don't really have a thigh gap. Like that their legs somehow, they do not really touch when they pose. It was like this phenomenon that I realized, wow, that is nice. And I just believed that it's like nice to have a thigh gap. I mean, I don't have a thigh gap, for sure. Like, I don't know, my knees go inward and so then my legs go inward and they're just like pressed together and that's the end of story. So I will never have a thigh gap, but I just find it so fascinating and honestly scary that just because society or a group of people deems one characteristic as so cool or so attractive, suddenly I am tempted to believe that 
that is the only way to be attractive too. And it's just, it's just crazy. I'm gonna make a video very soon about all the tips and lessons I've learned along the way in terms of overcoming our insecurities. But if I could just say one thing for this video, it's that we really need to have an internal sense of self-worth. I say this in almost like all of my videos, but I really believe that confidence is built when we have such a solid foundation and a true belief that we are beautiful, that our bodies are beautiful, no matter what standards society says or no matter what criticisms people say to us, we have to genuinely believe that we are beautiful, that we are valuable, that this jawline, these small hips, are valuable. I, I don't know, like I'm still working on it. Really, I am, I know. I'm not preaching to you out of this place of I'm already here, like look at me. No, like I'm struggling with it day by day. Every day I have to tell myself, wait a minute, you are so beautiful. You are so valuable. What the heck? Like, why would you ever think you're not? And it's just crazy. Like it gets harder from here. If we build our self-worth based on the standards of this society and we find our happiness from that, we're gonna be screwed when we get older. Cause what does society say about wrinkles? right? What does society say about saggy skin? It's not good. It's really not good. And if I keep letting myself be swayed back and forth based on society and on other people, I'm seriously going to be screwed when I grow up and I'm going to be so unhappy. We are so beautiful. We are beautiful when we gain weight, when we lose weight. We are beautiful when we are young and plump and thriving. We are beautiful when we're older, wiser, our skin is wrinklier, it's sagging. We're beautiful then too. I promise you, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, like for real. Again, I'm gonna go into this more in my future video, but seriously, preferences exist. What one person finds super attractive, another person might be like, ah, they're all right. And that's just the reality of it. And so I encourage you to really give yourself space to just value your unique, precious body. At least that's what I'm telling myself every day. And yeah, I hope we can do that together. Today, I focus on the body image side of my insecurities. In my next video, I'm gonna share all about the personality side of my insecurities. So make sure to stay tuned for that video coming up in several days. And just to share a little bit about staying up to date with my videos, this is actually something I just learned recently, but I've never known the difference between subscribing and pressing the little notification bell. But I learned that when you just subscribe to my videos, my videos show up in your subscriptions, but you're never really notified when I post post my video. So I would highly encourage you to press that notification bell so that you're notified every time I post a video. When my subscribers watch my videos pretty early on, like right after I post it, it shows YouTube that they're interested and that they're watching. And it then signals to YouTube to push it out to more people so that they can watch my videos and have access to this kind of encouragement. I just wanna thank you so much for engaging with my videos. Every comment seriously means the world to me. Like I read every single one and I'm like, ah, oh, I'm so glad you resonate. Every thumbs up really matters too. If this video sparked anything in particular for you. As usual, please do feel free to leave a comment below or DM me. I love reading what you have to say and I love feeling like we're together on this journey to empowerment. Thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you in the next one.